I had a very complicated relationship with my dad. And it was really, there was a foundation of tough love with my father. And um, wasn't a big, I love you guy. He would beat my ass when I was five years old. There's a testosterone thing that just happens between sons uh, and their fathers. And he wanted sympathy. And I said, if you want sympathy, go home to your mother and get it. He said, you are throwing it all away. It is the worst mistake you will ever make. And I wish I had someone who could just pull me aside and say, hey, gonna be okay. It'll be okay. I wish I knew that. My dad got into professional wrestling in the 60s and the 70s. 150 pounds, Rocky Johnson. Where it was an all-white wrestling business, an all-white audience. And at that time in the late 60s, where racial tension and divide was still very strong, and the wounds were still there. Uh, but he was able to change behavior audience's behavior, so this all-white audience who would never cheer a black man cheered him in these arenas. He would get up at usually 5, 5.30 in the morning, and he would say, if I get up, you're gonna get up too. Yes, and I, would just, I wouldn't work out, but he would just make sure that I was there and be with him, and that was our time that we could spend together. My dad always said to that, <clears throat> regardless of what you do in life and where you go, respect is gonna be given when it's earned, and you have to go out and earn it every single day. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island. We couldn't live in Hawaii. We had no place to live. My mom and I came home, and I'll never forget, the rent was $180 a week. And there was an a eviction. Week? A week. And there was an eviction notice on the, um, on the door. And it was, this was the one, it was the final <laughs> eviction notice. My mom started crying and I never forgot in that moment. It was a seminal moment for me because I felt like I never want to be in this position again. What can I do? So at 14 years old, I thought, well, the heroes in my life, Muhammad Ali, for example, professional wrestlers, um, they're all men who have worked hard with their hands and they built their body. Ah, yes, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do what my dad taught me and these other heroes, I'm gonna go build my body so we're never evicted again. And at that time, we were, we were at an all-time low, I think, with our family, and I am already a pretty big boy, six foot four, 200, maybe 20, 25 pounds. I had a very bad mustache. I had a chip on my shoulder. Fresh into this high school in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Freedom High School. A teacher comes in, his name is Jody Swick. Tough guy. He shook my hand. I'll never forget that shake. He said, I want you to do something for me. Yes? Why don't you come out and play football for me? I said, okay. And I went out and I, and I played football for, for Jody Swick and he was our head football coach. And um, he became a, a father figure to me and a mentor. I fell in love with the game of football and I started getting recruited from every college across the country. My thought process started to change. That's when I started thinking about goals and what I wanted to accomplish. My goal was to play in the NFL. Again, because we didn't have a lot of money, so I wanted to be the first one to buy my parents a house. And the dream didn't come true. I didn't get drafted. I didn't get any offers, nothing. I had to work up in Canada, the Canadian Football League. When I was cut from there, I had, uh, my dad had to come pick me up. And I'll never forget, we were on I-75. He lived in Tampa, came to Miami, got in his pickup truck. We drove up I-75 and I'm 23 years old, I am forced to move back in with my parents. He got sassy with me one time, it was about a mile and a half from home, and he wanted sympathy, and it was pouring down rain, and I said, if you want sympathy, go home to your mother and get it. And I wish I had someone at that time who, who could just pull me aside and say, hey, it's gonna be okay. After about a month and a half of staying in that little apartment and cleaning. I got a phone call from the head coach of the team who cut me, the head coach of the Calgary Stampeders. He called me and he said, hey, I know we cut you, but I'd like you to come back. I said, okay, I appreciate that coach. Thank you very much, uh, I'll think about it. He said, okay, great. I hung up the phone and um, my dad said, you're gonna do it, right? I said, no, I don't think so. And he goes, what? I said, my gut tells me I'm done. He said, what are you gonna do? took a deep breath, 
I said, I'd like to get into the business. He said, what business? I said, the wrestling business. He said, you are throwing it all away. It is the worst mistake you will ever make. He said, you're ruining your career. At that time, we were living in a small apartment in Tampa, Florida, and yeah. he said, look around. This is what I have. I don't have anything. And I don't want that for you. He said, maybe I'll be no good. But I feel like in my heart, I have to do this. Oh, you get goosebumps listening to this crowd. I was the hottest heel in the company. And things were on fire. Correct me if I have anything that's wrong. You uh, bought your mom a house for Christmas. I did. 1218. <gasps> <gasps> a brand new home. Love you, Just so cool to buy her a house and, and and you bought your dad a house too. I did. I bought my old man a house too. So that's the greatest thing ever, right? Yeah. To buy your parents a house. Yes. Right. Yeah. Rocky the Soul Man Johnson passed away. Uh, he passed away on January 15th and we just buried him a few days ago. And I didn't get a chance to say the things that I wanted to say or I wish he would have said the things to me. Um, the important critical things that anchor us that I didn't get from him. But then the birth of a child and what that does and the, the, the lens perspective that just shifts, it's the greatest thing that I have ever experienced in my life. My daughter's taught me how to be more caring and more sensitive and more uh, selfless. Yeah. My dad loved me with a small capacity in which he was capable of. So the relationship that I had with my dad was a relationship that was appropriate at that time. My dad was on his own when he was 13 years old, uh, homeless and in the streets. It just gives me a real perspective now that I'm older and a dad myself on the tough love that I got. Mm -hmm. So because for years, and I know a lot of my friends, a lot of guys out there, there's a testosterone thing that just happens between sons uh, and their fathers. Very important to heal, to make sure that we come back to the gratitude for, the, for what I was able to have with him. What, what the soul man my dad was able to accomplish during his career was no small feat. I remember night after night, watching him perform all over the country being awed by his quickness, by his agility. He was an amazing performer. And for Dwayne, for everything you've done for me. You made me proud. I continue our family wrestling legacy. But I will say this on the bottom of my heart, and I love him very much. He's my son, and he always will be. And I'm very proud of him. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. And I just remind myself, I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island, we couldn't live in Hawaii, had no place to live. I would remember that, and it allows me then to be present in the moment and understand, holy oh, shit, this is stuff I have around me right now. This is the shit that I dreamed of when I was a kid. I am here. I try and find a way to be grateful for every single thing I have, every single day. Wins, losses, loved ones, you name it. My life wasn't always this way. It was much different many moons ago. So these days I'm grateful to the bone for everything. The other thing is hunger. Uh, you always hear people say, well, it's about being number one, about being at the top, or how about this? Um, you're always gonna find somebody out there who's gonna work harder. Well, I don't know that, that might be bullshit, but I know no one is gonna be hungrier than I am. It's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. And I love that because it immediately clicked, it's in my DNA. I know what it's like to operate every single day, regardless of the success that I've been a lucky son of a bitch to achieve. I operate every day as if I'm starving. If you're going through some hard times, you gotta hold on to that fundamental quality of faith and hard work because on the other side of those hard times is something better, is a better life.